When we speak of the war between the North and South, we are not speaking of two different directions. The strained attempts at holding together two cultures so diametrically opposed resulted in a disastrous war. God's will ought to be our aim, and I am contented that his design should be accomplished and not my own. General B saw how Jackson was taking control of his position, he became inspired and galloped back to his men where he delivered one of the most famous lines of the war. Look, men, there stands Jackson like a stone wall. To his wife, Jackson wrote, We can express the grateful conviction that God was with us and gave to the victory, and unto his holy name be the praise. Jackson and his men were again on the move through the Maryland night. They were exhausted. Jackson himself had not slept in two days. By late morning on September 16th, the first of Jackson's column filed into Sharpsburg. All of a sudden, gunfire broke out around Jackson and his party. Stonewall Jackson was struck immediately by three 57 caliber bullets. Jackson sank into unconsciousness murmuring his last words, which have become immortalized. Let us cross over the river and rest under the shade of the trees. Let us cross over that shining river and rest neath the shade of the trees. Some 12,000 Confederates began a one-mile advance across open fields toward the Federal Center in an attack known as Pickett's Charge. Exhausted from poor supplies and lack of sleep, Lee and his remaining 50,000 men headed south. It was about 1.30 in the afternoon before Grant arrived. He had not slept. His clothes were soiled and dusty and his boots were mud-spattered. The surrender interview lasted until about 3.45 p.m. The federal commander offered generous terms, allowing all Confederates to be paroled and return home, keeping their horses, sidearms, and baggage. After signing the surrender papers, Lee shook hands with Grant and walked out onto the porch. Federal officers immediately came to attention and saluted Lee. Lee returned the salute and mounted Traveler. I pray I may be spared to accomplish something for the benefit of mankind and the honor of God. God answered Lee's prayer. The Board of Trustees at a little school named Washington College in Lexington, Virginia, offered him the college presidency. Lee's Christian character was so highly regarded in England that several English admirers sent him a Bible. The Bible is a book in comparison with which all others in my eyes are of minor importance, and which in all my perplexities has never failed to give me light and strength. The New York Herald wrote, he came nearer the ideal of a soldier and Christian general than any man we can think of. Great military leaders would continue to journey from Europe to the United States to study firsthand the tactics Lee had used against better equipped and more numerous forces. They praised him as the greatest military genius of the century. One military man said, Lee's campaigns of 1862 are, quote, supreme in conception and have not been surpassed as examples of strategy by any other commander in history, end 